When I was a teenager and first realized my desire to become a novelist, the very first book I went out and bought was at a bookstore in Parma Town Mall in Parma, Ohio called B. Dalton's Booksellers. That book was called Ariel by Stephen R. Boyett. Now, I didn't know it at the time, but Stephen Boyett is only five years older than me. He wrote Ariel when he was still a teenager, too. I'm glad I was blissfully unaware of this fact, or it may have been horribly intimidating to know someone so young had written something so fantastic. Originally published in 1983, although it is not a very well-known book, Ariel is credited by many as being one of the very first true urban fantasy novels. See, this wasn't a book sending characters from our world into a fantasy world, and this wasn't a book mixing magic with the real world. This was a book that actually transformed our world into the fantasy. The story takes place in our world after an event known as The Change, and follows a young man named Pete Gary, who befriends a unicorn he names Ariel. The Change happened spontaneously and inexplicably one ordinary afternoon, and thereafter all devices using gunpowder, complex mechanics, or electricity suddenly stopped working. Cars stopped in the streets, planes fell from the sky, weapons ceased to fire, and magical creatures reappeared and began to roam the towns and countrysides of Earth. Ariel has always held a special place in my heart because it was the first novel I ever discovered on my own. See, before Ariel, every book I read was recommended by a teacher, or based on a movie, or was something a friend told me about. Ariel was unique. Ariel was the first time I ever walked into a bookstore and found the book on the shelf and bought it. Something about that made me feel grown up, mature, responsible. With Ariel, for the first time in my life, I was choosing my own adventure. Not to be confused with the Choose Your Own Adventure books. <laughs> but I was taking command of my path, picking my destiny. Because of that, I'm also grateful I picked up a great book. I mean, it would have sucked if my first foray into reading had been total crap. Now, the youth of Stephen Boyett shows through in Ariel. The story itself has a darling innocence and naivete about it. I've seen some reviews of Ariel wherein people claim you need to be of a certain age to appreciate the story, insinuating it's just for kids. I disagree. To fall in love with the purity of a unicorn, you need to have kept your own innocence. Most people develop a particular sort of cynicism that makes a book like Ariel difficult to enjoy. When that veneer of too many disappointments, too many betrayals, too many vices encases your soul, you start getting angry when you see people who are running around without being encrusted in the same tainted shell. And those bitter people won't understand talking unicorns. Those people are dead already because they have lost part of their soul that used to dream. That's not to say Ariel is all rainbows and unicorns, necromancers and unicorns and dark dystopian post-apocalypse, sure, but there are no puppies or lollipops. You know, there are demons and samurai and griffins. Maybe some Brock's peppermint candy, but no lollipops. <laughs> Ariel is the kind of story with characters that become your friends. You go on the road with them. You know, Pete is a little cynical. Ariel 
is a little sassy. And I think those traits are the ones we love most in our friends. You know, no one likes some phony, happy-go-lucky jerk who pretends to always, you know, shit sunshine and strawberries. We all like someone with a little sarcasm and snide. Ariel had such a strong effect on me as a teenager, I kept on forgetting it was only a book. At one point in junior high, I remember thinking I didn't need to worry about picking a high school because you know, once the change happened, I wouldn't be going to school anymore. I'd be fighting to survive in the post-apocalyptic aftermath. Awakening from that recurring daydream kind of freaked me out. That was the first moment when I realized I may have been taking the story a little too seriously. But isn't that what all great books do to us? Make us get so lost in their world we start to forget where the dream ends. Anyway, it's a wonderful story about first love and magic and the tragedy of losing the soulmate you can't have so you can be with someone you can. Damn, <laughs> I never knew I'd have to learn that lesson for real. Bet you never expected that one to happen to you either, did you? There are many other lessons to be learned from the novel as well. Other morals and themes to be sure, but I refuse to wax philosophical on them by cramming my head too far up my rectum like most critics because that just puts a crimp in my neck I don't need. Ariel was out of print shortly after the 1983 debut, but came back into print in 2009. I suggest you pick up a copy as soon as possible. After all, you don't want it to go out of print again. You need to make sure you have your own book as both a survival guide and a history of the world once the change happens. It pays to be prepared. You never know. The change could be coming any day now. Thank you so much for watching. Until next time, keep speaking English, America. Speak American English.